bit more intro. Uh, but I think we're hearing from seven different initiatives today. I think there are over 20 in the partnership, so there's lots of work going on, so it's just a taste. Uh, what we're going to try to do is give each uh, person about five minutes to do their presentation. Take about one to two minutes for any group Q&A that you have. Feel free to um, chime up with your questions at that point, or you can put them into the chat window. If there's anything that we don't get a chance to discuss in the chat, um, the folks that are leading those sessions, you can follow up with them directly. Uh, so there's probably not going to be a chance for all the questions to get in, so it's great if you can throw them up into chat so they can be addressed uh, later on. And again, I'll be the one keeping time on it. I apologize, but I'm going to be, you know, efficient. <laughs> so not that there isn't always great things to learn from all of you. Uh, Caroline? Okay, great. Thanks, Martha. Um, I do want to point out the link to uh, the uh, Google site. Sarah, uh, do you happen to have that open? Um, or could you click on it just to show everybody? Uh, I think most of you have seen this, but just to remind you that we have a whole bunch of initiatives. There, uh, many of them are active. Most of them are very active, and they all have um, sub pages. So you could click on any one of those sub pages, like maybe the collaborative learning or the marketing or something like that, and you can see that there's uh, notes. There are um, there are links to the products. There's, you know, who do you contact to get involved? So a whole bunch of um, stuff under each of the initiatives. Some things are more up to date than others. And so Sarah and I are both here to help uh, any of the initiative leads make sure that their pages are up to date. Uh, and then the only other thing I wanted to mention for our showcase, Sarah, if you wouldn't mind going back to the notes, is um, just that we are, as you hear them, keep in mind that we have some a little bit of a competition. So we're um, going to be asking you at the end to give us your vote for which you thought was the most eye-catching, which one made you really want to join their initiative. Uh, which is the best execution of the template. Of course, many of you probably don't even know what the template looks like, so that'll be an interesting one. Um, and then uh, which one did you find to be the most fun to listen to? So um, we're not going to, I'm going to move this up. We're not going to uh, include the, the quick reminder here in that competition. That's more just to orient you. So that's it from me. Okay, thanks, Caroline. The pressure is on. Um, all right, so I think our first one is the uh, well, sorry, of could I say promotion, this? which might be you. And sorry, I forgot to mention that this is being recorded. Um, or I think it's being recorded. So uh, I will double check. Yep, on that, it's being but, recorded. Okay. Yes. It is now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. So before we, this is Sarah Weber, by the way. Um, I haven't met everyone uh, yet. I am new work CMP over the summer as um, a partnership coordination consultant. So hello to everyone that I've talked to and hassled via email. Um, and hello to all of you I haven't met yet. The first thing we're going to talk about just before we dive into the initiatives really quickly is about um, our strategic plan and where we are keeping those updates for our strategic plan. So Marathi Share is the place where all of our strategic plan updates are being kept. Um, this is a file that anyone is able to view. Um, if you would like edit access, if you're an initiative leader or anything like that, you just have to let me know and you're able to make any updates you can make. Um, but I'm just going to show a few screen, uh, screen grabs quickly and I'll go to the strategic plan of Marathi Share as well. Uh, but this is just what the front looks like. Here's the strategic plan with a project summary. You can go through all of the great things that Marathi Share has, like the situation assessment, theory of change, actions, progress, classifications, all those things. Um, and I wanted to highlight a really comprehensively updated example of an initiative. So the conservation standards um, 4.0 was uh, successfully deployed in March, uh, but they also gave a lot of great updates as they were going through the process. So you can see here, here's the summary, um, as well as the results chain here. 
and a bunch of progress updates here um, that go all the way back to 2018 when this started. Um, so there's a bunch of progress updates there as well. So that's what, that's just an example of what it looks like. And I'm going to share, here's what Marathi Share looks like um, when you go into the strategic plan. On the, on the slides themselves, they have the link. I can also get into the chat. But this is what it looks like on Marathi Share. Um, you can go into here specifically if you want um, to look at the theory of each for each of our goals um, and get more in depth there. But it's just like any other Marathi project. Um, if you've been using Marathi to track your progress and we've just employed it for the strategic plan. So I'll be the one that keeps it updated moving forward. Um, so if you have any updates to anything that you'd like me to add uh, as an activity or anything like that, please let me know. Um, and we will be making sure that this is updated, uh, completely updated before every member's call. So right before the member's call and right after you can also see any updates that were made in the process. Does anyone have any questions about that? Oh, great, Caroline, just put it in the chat. No? Okay. Great. Then here Thanks we so have- Thanks so much for that, Sarah. Yep, so we just have here on uh, the link on there as well. Okay, great. I think Sarah, you're on the team for one of our first initiatives. So I'll just give you a moment to get to the right screen and let you know that the clock is going to start in a moment. So looking forward to hearing about um, promotion of the standards. Okay, I'm, um, I'm going to kick us off and I'm the one who asked uh, Martha to be the timekeeper and now I'm getting sweaty palms. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you for keeping us on task. So. I am one of the members of the marketing and promotion of the conservation standards. We seek to market and promote them to within our organizations, but also to broader uh, audiences. This has included some work on framing adaptive management messages as well. And uh, if we can go to the next slide, we'll get into a little bit more um, about what this is all about. Um, so I guess before diving in, this is our team, uh, at least our current team. You uh, may want to join our team when we're all done here, but we have a wide range of people across several different organizations and really it's a great group uh, providing really constructive feedback to, to help improve our products. Next slide, please. Uh, so where this fits into the CMP strategic plan, there are four, I think there are four goals. Um, or, or, well, I guess one of them is more kind of the, the work of CMP, but this is really related to promoting organization and community uptake of good conservation practice. In particular, it's our strategy around outreach about the conservation standards. Um, it's also related, if you click again, to um, promoting CMP's role and achievement across the broader conservation community. So that's where this fits in. Uh, let's see what's next. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to Justin here. Hey guys, nice to see all of you. Um, my name is Justin, I'm the videographer. And so for part of that promotion, um, I'm working on a bunch of videos to promote the standards, one of them being a, an anthem video that kind of shows the brand um, in a really quick sort of very highly visual, really nice music sort of video. And that's a general audience to attract people to the standards. Um, and then we have our testimonial videos, which there's going to be about 10 to 15, uh, maybe even more. Um, videos that kind of highlight the, the practitioners of the standards all around the world. And so we have our first example of what that would look like. This is the first draft and we've gotten some feedback on it so far. Um, so we can go ahead and show that. My name is Rosamira Guillén. I am the executive director of Fundación Proyecto Titi. We work uh, to protect the one. Oh no, the dreaded buffer circle. 
Sorry, everyone. Hold on one second. So, one pound critically endangered cut and tuft tamarind. This is a small primate that is only found in the tropical forests of northern Colombia. It is a critically endangered species um, due to deforestation and capture for the pet trade. Their forest is down to about 2%. So we work to protect, restore their forest, um, educate the local communities, provide income alternatives and conservation agreements, and do research on the species and the forest. This is, is from the place I was born and raised, and I never knew about them growing up. So that motivated me back in the years to do something about it. The, the challenge that we have faced or that we faced in the beginning is setting some uh, indicators that ended up being not too realistic with regards to things that we can measure. The conservation standards are a very useful tool to plan your actions, to plan your goals. And the conservation standards help you uh, build the steps or the road to get there. It took a lot of effort in the beginning, but then it becomes like second nature. And everything in your organization starts revolving around the strategies, the results change, the indicators, and the goals you want to achieve. Uh, I have enjoyed very much having that clear path, and I have enjoyed very much um, and going through the process and of course seeing the results it's been also very gratifying yeah the idea there is basically the organizations that are using the standards and are doing the interview for these videos will be excited to share what they're doing and kind of um, allow us to access a wider audience. So there'll be a lot of cross promotion with these types of videos. Um, and so this one kind of sets the standard for the rest of them where we're still getting some interviews um, organized and everything, um, sent out a bunch of questions to our practitioners and now really starting to collect some of the, the interviews and the field footage. And then our last video, um, is our about us video. So it's going to be a little bit more of an in-depth look of about the standards and the partnership and we'll feature some interviews um, some of some of the organizers and everything and that's that will allow people who are really interested in becoming involved uh, to understand what's going on what the organization is about and how it could benefit their conservation organization. Um, so we're still figuring out that one uh, getting the the dates and the logistics nailed down for doing our interviews. Um, and I forgot to mention for our first Anthem video, we're working on the script now. Once that's finalized, um, that video should be coming out very soon as well. Okay, okay was that it or if there's more? Because we're at time. So you might uh, wanna yep, wrap it yep, up and going. switch to Q&A. Yep, absolutely. So uh, we just have uh, two, more slides uh, real quickly. Uh, we have, aside from the videos, um, we are also updating the conservation standards PowerPoint slides with the working group um, to make sure that the look and feel uh, will match our new website, which is our other big project, is we are creating three new websites, one for conservation standards, one for conservation measures partnership, and one for CCNET um, to all have the same look and feel. Um, and they will likely be ready for launch in the next month or two, um, and we will let you know um, as soon as those are out, but we're very excited about those. And then what's next? Yep, websites will most likely be done sometime um, in October. Our hopefully having our promotional videos done by the end of December, released starting in 2021. We're trying to improve our two-pager on the benefits of CMP membership so that we can recruit more members um, and easier for them to know what they get out of being a CMP member. Um, and then please get involved if you want. Um, please either email me, Sarah, or, um, or Caroline if you have questions, or Justin if you have questions about the video. And we have a workspace site um, on, a, on our uh, workspace as well. So, thanks. Uh, questions?
Thank you, Sarah, Justin, and Caroline for that. I think in the interest of time, we need to keep on moving. But if you do have any questions, obviously you can email folks or throw them up in the chat now, um, and they can address them later on. But for now, if we can switch to our next initiative, spatial open Spatial Conservation Standards, uh, Lillian and Nick. Martha, would it be okay if I just shared a couple of the comments from the the chat box? Uh, oh, sure. They're going directly to you. I'm not saying them. Okay. No. Yep. It's um, so one is that uh, Erica, and I'll put these into the notes. Um, Erica says, "Bravo, Justin." Uh, really excited about the potential impact of these videos. And Paulina shared the diversity of the people that uh, we plan to interview is great. Great, thanks for that. And it, folks, if you do want to uh, chat and let other people know, it's great if you just keep it on to everyone um, so that we all can hear. Uh, okay, moving on to uh, Lillian and Nick. Thank you, I think uh, I will start. Um, can you hear me fine? Yes. 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 Wonderful. And then um, I'll start, and then Nick will um, follow. So uh, my name is Lilian Pinti. I'm with the Jane Goodall Institute, and I'm um, one of the members of the spatial uh, spatial team. Uh, can you go next, please? So the spatial uh, work fits uh, under the strategic plan uh, under the two major goals. One of them is under improving the projects and programs, and it comes under the developing new guide, uh, guidance and tools. And uh, right now we are at the stage of uh, still providing different case studies and examples of good conservation practice using spatial tools and um, um, in showing how investment in system resources can support such good conservation practice. Next. It also comes under the enabling cross-project learning. Um, and um, it under enabling cross-project learning. And uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I see just a, a section of the of the slide, but it, it's, it's fine, you can go ahead. Um, and then, um, uh, specifically under the conservation data standards and the, um, developing the NIT ecosystem and, and platform for successful conservation. Next. I, I will share with you a very uh, few slides about um, the work of this group through some GGI's uh, Jane Goodall Institute uh, project, uh, which, can, which has been uh, supporting this initiative. So, uh, and we understand that each organization has its own uh, differences and partnerships, um, but this is uh, somehow how this we're trying to combine into, to integrate conceptual with spatial. Um, the spatial analysis requires support, uh, and, and it's aligned with the use of geospatial technologies. And if you look at the geospatial technology process, it's pretty much aligned with any applied research uh, steps. You know, you you have to define your problem, you have to collect data, you have to go and analyze and the data and uh, convert from data into some information, and then you have to communicate that information to the users. And we recognize that as you go through the standard process, this type of geospatial technology processes are happening multiple times, and at each step, actually, with every information product or with every um, um, indicator, you basically go through multiple, multiple uh, technology processes. and. What connects all of them together is that they have to run from a special, spatial um, platform uh, or you know, we call, we call it geospatial platform. And the GGI's choice for that is using Esri RGIS, uh, which is also combining with the Microsoft Azure clouds, but there is many other platforms. So the point of this presentation is not necessarily specifically Esri RGIS platform, but how we could um, uh, develop this vision of standards which will help us connect these different platforms and, and of course leverage across uh, and support the conservation planning process. Next. Um, so one uh, specific tool which was developed is uh, um, uh, this new habitat viability uh, tool uh, under the built on Esri RGS platform and uh, it's a specific tool which any conservation practitioners who are using 
uh, Esri tools can can have access to if it's interested. You know, I can make a demo um, uh, at another time. Uh, it probably I will need it probably an hour to go in more details. But basically, it allows to combine uh, polygons with different um, habitat data derived from GIS and satellite imagery, and it's an interactive and dynamic tool which supports conversation and dialogue uh, and allows to run different scenarios. Next. Um, click next. So for example, it, it brings satellite data, it brings uh, chimpanzee habitat models, uh, suitability models in our case. It combines with some sort of management units and uh, this is an example of Chimscapes, which JJ is using for our annual institute-wide annual um, plan and reporting. And then uh, uh, it allows to convert all of that into some specific viability indicators, which you see up on the right, on, on the lower right, next. And because it's all part of one geospatial platform, which is powered by, in this case, by Esri on its own cloud, this work is immediately connected to live dashboards. So every time when you run a different scenarios or a different, you know, you can end up with such dashboards of your viability results. In this case, it shows comparison between habitat viability and population viability, which complements each other, um, which allows, you know, a little bit, um, uh, you can explore these different um, uh, indicators. Next. And it's, and it's very exciting that, um, it's very exciting that, that this type of platforms and standards can be used not only for GGI, but through the work, through this uh, uh, CMP and, and, and by using conservation standards, through conservation standards, um, this type of approaches and methods and tools and spatial standards now are supporting a variety of plans. So one example is the Tanzania Chimpanzee Conservation Action Plan was one of the first developing some of this uh, viability habitat standards. And right now um, we are taking this uh, tool developed with ESRI and funded by NASA and implementing now in Tanzania to for the Tanzania Wildlife Research Institute who owns the, the, the CHIM plan and, and uh, is responsible for its implementation. And we are building basically the same on the same ESRI infrastructure to, to bring together these different tools to support the conservation plan implementation under the conservation standards. Next. So as a result, you know, uh, we are up to next year to do a revision of the implementation of the plan. Um, the decision makers will be able to have a look again and, and interact with some of the decisions and see some of these indicators live. And um, for example, this is just an example, you know, that you can see that Lugufu uh, uh, core chimpanzee range uh, switched now between when the plan was developed from fair to, from good to fair. But if you look now in more detail, uh, the habitat trends and the uh, cumulative percent habitat loss, you'll see that this has been happening now in the last couple of years and actually very soon, probably in a year or two, it's going to switch very quickly from fair to poor. So again, it allows decision makers to look uh, again at the data, which they contributed um, and, and set up the thresholds and agreed to measure and, and allows them to visualize and open it a little bit more. Nick, do you want to go next? I think we're out of time, so we probably should yes, skip we this are. part. <laughs> well, we have seven minutes. I'm, Five minutes I'm sorry, I was just about to break in. Just one more minute for you guys. Thanks. We'll, we'll skip. Um, I think the rest part was about, about how we're doing, kind of combining different kinds of planning. Um, we'll skip it for now. It's all right. But uh, the point is the Spatial Committee has been somewhat dormant in trying to ad advance a vision of global spatial standards, and we'd love uh, feedback and help getting there. Thank you for that, Nick. Um, feel free to uh, throw any questions you might have in the chat, and I'm sure we can have some of this material available for you after the call. The next initiative we'll be hearing from is the failure factors, which is David. Give you a moment to get started, and the clock will begin. Hi, guys. Well, I, I will not win the prize for uh, fo following the template because I had no idea what I was doing. So the Failure Factors Initiative was uh, started at the last face-to-face uh, -face conference that we had where I pitched this idea that humans typically don't learn so well from things that we do successfully, but we're enormously good at learning from failure. 
And thanks to Walton Family Foundation, they thought that that was a good idea and supported the idea of having uh, a little bit of uh, some money to, to support moving this forward. And as part of a, a CMP initiative, we had a, a launch meeting last November and we had some great plans to move forward with uh, a, a learning group and some field field implementation and some surveys of our of conservation organizations and then COVID hit and that of course put any field implementation um, out the door. Uh, can I go to the next slide? So we really we really are um, uh, attempting to to bring in evidence in a very different way. Uh, evidence rather than sort of systematic reviews or empirical data. This is expert opinion at a, at a sort of rapid, rapid clip of adaptive management. So the idea about learning from failure, typically, as we discussed in the, in the launch meeting, was a, a way to speed up the way that teams think about what's working and what's not and integrate that rapidly into their, their, their project activities. And part of this came from an understanding of the smart patrolling mechanism that, that lots of us are using to detect threats and, and, and uh, police areas, both in community con conservancies and in national parks. And, and there the learn, using what you learn during the pat patrol and saying, what should we be doing next is a very cool way of having teams get together to think about what's working and what's not and rapidly adapting their strategy for, for what they should do on the next patrol. So as we couldn't do anything directly in the field because of COVID, what I was able to do was to find two very smart uh, graduate students at Yale School of Forestry. And they, with the rest of us, put, in, put together uh, a survey to interview a bunch of the Conservation Measures Partners partners and some other donors to find out, particularly focusing on after action reviews and pause and reflect sessions. And I want to thank everybody who actually did participate in this, these reviews and provide the two students with some great information that they were able to distill just recently into a first draft of a report. Uh, we're currently editing that report with the students and hope to uh, produce uh, something to share with all of CMP within the next I think the next three or four weeks, which is great. The one thing that we were able to do was convince the European Union, uh, the DEVCO, their, their major uh, environmental funding uh, wing, they gave FAO, WCS, and C4 and C RAD a, a year and a half ago, 45 million euros to work on a sustainable wildlife management program. And we were able to convince uh, Philippe Maillot and, and FAO to adopt pause and reflect as a core element of all of the partners monitoring evaluation and learning frameworks, which is pretty cool. They're all terrified about the whole prospect of doing it because they've never done it before. But they're really interested in seeing how uh, after action reviews or pause and reflect sessions can, can speed up team's abilities to be able to talk to one another in a transparent and an honest way about what actions are working and why and what's not going in the right direction or in a direction they want and what they need to do differently. So the great thing is this is now baked into the work plans of, of, the, of WCS, C4, CRED and FAO and it will be a very interesting experiment for the failure factors initiative to really see whether in fact pause and reflect sessions in practice uh, really do two things. One, build a culture of sharing of lessons learned, particularly failures amongst teams, whether we can capture those lessons and share them outside the, the, the individual teams, and whether we think it's a, 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 a really good way to rapidly adapt projects, pro project actions uh, rather than sort of midterm evaluations and end of project evaluations. So I think this is very promising. And as we come out of COVID, I'd very much like to, to work with the uh, uh, Failure Factors Initiative partners to see if we can replicate what's happening in the EU SWIM project 
uh, in, in other conservation NGOs. Thanks, that's me. Thank you for that, David, right on time. Uh, if there are any questions, we have a chance to jump in now or you can throw it in the chat. You're hearing none. Um, could I maybe ask one question? This is Caroline. Sure. Um, David, if people are interested or able to get involved, how do they do that? Uh, please just send to me an email. You know where I live. And absolutely, I'd love to. to uh, what I, what I, I think that one of the best ways to, 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 to do this is reach out, with, reach out and give me an email. I'll send you the proceedings from the launch workshop we had in the National Zoo in Washington last November. And as soon as the, the Yale students uh, first survey of pause and reflect sessions comes out, I'll share that with everybody, of course. Great, thank you, David. Uh, I'm going to move on to our next group, Conservation Actions and Measures Library. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Varsha Suresh. I'm with FOS, I'm a fairly new employee, and I look forward to meeting you all eventually. So um, going right in, uh, next slide. So uh, developing and maintaining the Conservation Actions and, Actions and Measures Library has been an explicit part of CMP's plan. Uh, if you can hit next, you'll see the orange arrow point to the activity bubble that shows uh, that this was part of goal two, which is to enable cross-project learning. So CAMEL 1.0 is launched back in 2015, but quite frankly, hasn't uh, had too much attention since then. And so over the last six months, as a part of my internship with FOS, I've been working with the CAMEL team to create CAMEL 2.0, which will be launched this October. And today I wanted to give you a little preview into what the new CAMEL looks like uh, via an intro video that's still in its draft stages. Um, next slide. Conservation Measures Partnership, Foundations of Success, and Marathi Software bring to you a new and improved Conservation Actions and Measures Library. CAMEL is an oasis of knowledge designed to help you develop more effective conservation strategies. The foundation of any science is a common taxonomy. Think of medicine and how we've classified diseases and their globally accepted courses for treatment. Consider the animal kingdom and how we've classified species to great specificity to better understand what's out there. Naming something helps us understand it, learn from it, and share our ideas with others while speaking a common language. CMP has classified conservation actions, taking stock of common strategies used by organizations worldwide and collecting evidence on what works along the way. When we're aware of all of our options, we can better choose the interventions that will be best suited for our conservation context. This taxonomy of actions allows us to continue building a robust evidence base and share and learn from one another as we implement. We've taken this taxonomy and turned it into a tool, a set of generic recipes for effective conservation, or CAMEL. No, not that CAMEL, this CAMEL. This CAMEL uses the Conservation Actions Taxonomy to build, conservation, to build the Conservation Actions and Measures Library. CAMEL is a library of common actions and measurements used globally by conservationists. To get a better taste of what CAMEL looks like and what it can do, let's imagine cooking from a new recipe together. Put your chef's hat on for a moment and imagine searching for a new recipe. You might open your grandma's recipe book or go online and search for the ideal recipe that someone else has already perfected. The online library gives you a general recipe or template to choose from and build upon. Instead of wondering where to start, you use the recipe to get the basic ingredients together and start cooking your own generic chili. But you don't stop there. You add in the ingredients that are most relevant to your tastes or the context of your kitchen, turning the generic chili into Camel's famous chili. We search for recipes for many things. Those in the medical field use globally accepted treatment guidelines to combat diseases. <clears throat> Camel will lead you to generic recipes or templates for all of the standard conservation actions found in this classification. These recipes are in the form of results chains, the diagrams that we use to represent theories of change. CAMEL gives you access to the anticipated intermediate results, threat reduction results, conservation targets, 
and human well-being targets resulting from the common conservation action or strategy. Here's an example of a generic conservation action recipe or template for action 4.1 in the taxonomy. This can then be specified to focus on whatever your conservation context requires, from protecting elephants and reducing poaching, to guarding sea turtle nests to reduce egg collection and increase turtle populations. So if you go to the next slide, uh, I'd like to show you the draft template of what the CAMEL landing page will look like. This will be launched in October. So the website has been designed in a manner that it allows all categories of audiences to easily access everything that CAMEL has to offer, like people who are coming in to view the theories of change and use it for their projects, as well as people who are CAMEL curious and want to learn more about CAMEL. If you hit next, you can see that there's a little about CAMEL on the right hand side. And then finally, people who wish to contribute to CAMEL, and then they can see the contribute page. If you click next, then you'll see what the contribute page would look like. And then you can see the three different ways in which people can either contribute to existing chains as well as contribute new chains. Then moving on, parallelly, along with working on CAMEL, we're also uh, working on launching this new series in the Society for Conservation Biology. And we hope to have about four papers a year where each paper would contain the key elements that you can see to the right hand side of this slide. And then the results of this will also be published in Tamil. Uh, wrapping up, next slide, the next steps. So we are hoping to launch, uh, relaunch CAMEL on October 13th as a part of the Collaboration for Environmental Evidence Summit uh, web series, and parallelly also launch this new series in the Conservation Science and Practice journal for which we look forward to any contributions. Uh, you can refer to the previous slide to see what the key elements of a contribution would look like, and also you can feel free to reach out to us to know more about that. Once the website is ready and launched, all the links to uh, contribute to these different parts will be available to you. And then finally, looking more closely at the CAMEL entries themselves, uh, there are many actions for which we are still looking for examples as well as entries. So if you could go into the tracking sheet on the blue bubble, you'll see what the current status of each of these actions are. And if you feel that you might have an example for any of these entries, you can feel free to reach out uh, to us through the email ID present uh, on the blue bubble. Uh, and yeah, Nick, if you have anything to add, otherwise that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Varsha. That was really uh, cool and exciting to see. And I know everyone appreciated the CAMEL um, graphic as well. I love it when people embrace their acronyms. Uh, if there aren't any general questions, there's a lot going on in the chat. But do uh, follow up with Varsha if you want to get involved. And we're going to be moving on to our next topic, which is work planning system support. This is a net, I believe. Yeah, hi everyone, it's Annette here. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Cool, thanks. Um, so hi everyone, this is a quick update on some work being done within the operations working group around our data systems project. Our working group's focused on looking at the systems and guidance that we need to help everyone manage conservation projects and, and the information in them and integrate them with the rest of their organisation. Um, if you could go to the next slide, thanks, Sarah. In terms of the strategic plan, we're playing in the area of the red boxes, um, talking about two topics today, work planning and reporting. Um, it's all about trying to get the right systems in place that are easy to use and, and help you get on with your job um, with the ultimate aim of goal two around having information available to enable this cross project learning as well as being sort of more efficient along the way. Next slide, thanks. So progress to date. Um, some of you or many of you would have been at the CMP retreat about a year or so ago. We had a workshop there and out of that identified six key areas where we wanted to um, <clears throat> focus our efforts on system support. Um, we've finished the first phase of that project um, around analysing all the roles and user tasks that we needed to do. Um, we presented that at the March call, if you recall that, but um, we've got a, what we call a broadsheet outlining all these six areas, the analysis we did the, and the needs we have. 
Um, two of those areas, work planning and reporting, were identified as our initial priorities. And so um, that's what we've been doing since March. Um, the other areas uh, listed down the bottom left there are on, on the back burner till we make some progress on these two. And there's a whole bunch of information on our workspace site if you want to dig into any details. Next slide, thanks. The first topic is reporting and I'll just ask Kari to quickly um, update you on, on how that part of the project's going. Yeah, this is Kerry uh, Stiles. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm, I'm stalling because this looks like a slightly older version of the slide and my updates must not have gotten in there yet. Um, the, so yeah, um, we'll be doing a, another longer presentation on the Marathi template reporting at a future meeting, either in December or in the winter. So I'll keep this super short, but um, what we're working on is developing a, um, some templates using Word that we can share with um, all of the Marathi user community, standalone Marathi projects in Marathi Share, as well as um, Marathi projects that are part of larger programs. And the goal is to use Word to develop the templates, but also generate reports in Word that pull Marathi content directly from the Marathi projects, like that snapshot that you see in the upper right, so that we can share information in a more compelling way with a wide variety of audiences. And what's shown here is just a list of the um, types of reports that our advisory group has been um, talking about with the bold um, ones um, emphasized, because those are what we're focusing on for standard reports in the beginning. And then we've been talking about the different audiences who might um, want to consume information from Marathi in a in a, um, a simpler report form. And if you'd like to get um, more, more information on this uh, project, you can contact me. This is Carrie Stiles at FOS or Erica Cochran um, at ICF. And we have a great advisory group with a number of folks from TNC, NCC, Bush Heritage, and others, um, and as well as some pilot um, users who will be helping us develop and test these. So, Annette, I'll turn it back to you. All right, thanks, Carrie. Um, next slide, thanks, Sarah. So, um, back onto work planning. Um, top right there, you can see our fabulous working group. We've got a terrific range of people from different organisations, different roles, different parts of the planet. So, really great input to this. And thanks to the folks that are on the call, a part of that group. I think we're making some great progress. We've got a theory of change for all of our data systems work about trying to build better systems. Um, don't worry too much about the detail, but um, to date we've been focused on the sort of bottom left part, which is around really un understanding exactly what we need, in this case in work planning, and coming up with a plan for how to develop that. We're now starting to turn our attention to the top row, the um, getting the organisations involved and engaged so that we can ultimately get the resourcing in place to move on to the right where we can develop the module. So what we're showing today is primarily sort of the, the bottom left part of the work we're trying to do. Next slide. Thanks, Sarah. So um, on the left there, see open the conservation standard cycle. Um, work planning is primarily around step three, the implement step. Um, so what we did as a working group um, was we collated all of the information that we got in phase one, grouped those up into stories, which is a, an approach for developing systems for related tasks prioritise them, and then we started looking out at um, products that are out there, commercial off-the-shelf products, um, and compared them against the stories. Certainly when I went into this, my assumption was um, that there's, there's certainly a gazillion projects, um, project management type tools out there, and um, they're really good. They do what they do really well, really helpful. And my thoughts were we could build an interface from the early stages of a project, so the, the plan that comes out of Marathi, interface to these other project um, products and let them manage the day-to-day -day work of getting that work implemented and get some information back to feed into the analyze and adapt step and the information in Rowdy there. Um, that was the plan going in, um, but it's not quite what happened. If you could go to the next slide. Um, what we learned by doing, doing all that analysis. Um, Sarah, next slide, thanks. I'm not seeing it at this end. Cool, thanks. Um, was that while these products do what they do really well, and there's definitely a role for them there, it's a much narrower range of um, tasks that they do compared to what we need. And what we've concluded is that we need to actually um, extend the capabilities in Marathi. 
much further, uh, well into step three. There's already some functions supported there, but there's a bunch that aren't. Um, potentially interface off in some way to these other products to do what they do well, which is the task management stuff, um, and then pull information back to do more in Marathi. So we're into um, needing a much bigger development effort within Marathi than what we had originally expected. Um, next slide, thanks. So where we're at right now is um, we've costed what it's going to take to build all these stories, the range, and it depends on exactly priorities and what we do, it's three to 700,000. We're now preparing all the materials around um, a case, making a case for that, a clear business case around costs and benefits, um, and then coming up with materials to help people get engaged with this work. Um, so if, um, if you in your organization need better support for work planning, we're keen to chat, work out how we could help you um, contact decision makers, how together we can get more engagement on this and, and ultimately start um, getting the funding on board and, and pool our resources and, and move on with this development. So happy to take any questions, but um, please get in touch if this area is of interest to you. Thanks. Thank you, Annette. Any questions? We have a moment. Pause for awkward silence. Going once, going twice. That was really clear, uh, okay. thanks. There's <laughs> there is one um, comment from Tim Tier in the chat box. It says, um, it will be really important to explain why and how existing programs like Asana are different than what you want to accomplish. Yeah, so we've got the detailed analysis about all that. Happy to go into detail at some stage, Tim, if you like, but um, they're, they're focused on a pretty narrow range of um, task management. Um, aligning all those tasks clearly to the, st the strategic planning elements, goals and objectives, and then reporting back in a way that can measure those, it all breaks down pretty quickly. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of things that uh, <laughs> didn't fit the stories that we already had um, identified before we went into the analysis of the different products. Great, thanks for that, Annette. Um, okay, if there are any other questions, please throw them on in the chat, and we'll be moving on to the next initiative on training tomorrow's leaders. That's uh, Felix and Marika. Yes, um, hi everyone. Um, if you can do one more click. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, welcome to our short little presentation um, on our initiative, which is uh, training the next generation. It's an initiative of um, the TAM group, Teaching Adaptive Management. Um, the initiative has already had that idea of uh, creating an online course for I think a good seven years. Um, it's been lingering for uh, another two and then we gained major traction in 2019. Uh, also thanks to some seed money from CMP. And, um, and this is gonna be uh, the update that we are showing you on where this course uh, is, is standing at the moment and also where we're heading with this. Um, next slide, please. Um, just quickly with regards to the CMP strategic plan, we are, as the name suggests, um, plugging into the training next generation strategy, uh, mainly to provide practitioners with uh, increased skills and knowledge about what good conservation practice is um, all about. I'll be handing over to Marika to explain a little bit about the uh, course because she's actually uh, currently managing uh, the course that is at this very moment live and, uh, and with participants uh, happening. So Marika. Thanks, Felix. Um, Thanks, Sarah, for advancing. You can actually advance one more time. So what you're seeing here is, um, is the poster, the web page for our course. <clears throat> we currently um, are running two courses consecutively. Um, so just to step back for a moment and explain to people who don't know, or <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is just breaking up here. For those who haven't heard about this before, um, we are currently teaching a course in step three, it's an online course. And um, we have two cohorts currently. The first one started on August 10th, the second one on August 31st. Um, so they are either in module three or four of the course right now. Um, it's going really well. The first cohort um, is a bunch of fellows from the Rainforest Trust, and they did not have prior um, experience in steps one and two of the conservation standards. So that initially um, 
we saw as a potential challenge. Um, we're happy to say that we have managed to support the students um, by giving them additional training um, and training resources to get more or less up to speed with step one and two. And um, they seem to be doing well now um, in the step three course. So um, if you could click again, please, Sarah. Um, so yeah, so we're currently running these two courses. Each is 12 weeks long. Um, we currently have 16 students representing 12 time zones, which has been interesting logistically um, and representing 13 countries. Um, next, click again. So in 2021, we, have, we are planning three courses and the University of Wisconsin has just confirmed the, um, the three courses. Uh, we're hoping to have about 20 students per course. So that will be a total of 60 students, we hope being trained next year. Um, I'd also just say that we initially envisioned this course as a six week course. Um, we expanded it to 12 weeks um, when we look more carefully at people's work commitments and um, also more carefully at our target audience, which are mainly working professionals, early to mid-career um, conservation practitioners and graduate students. And um, I can tell you from the feedback so far that they're very grateful that it's a 12-week course and many of them actually find it, uh, it is quite challenging, you know, to keep up um, because, yeah, it, uh, let's just say it's not an easy course so far, but the students are doing well. So um, we can click again. And I'll hand it back to Felix to talk about the future. Oh, no, hang on. First, I'll tell you about the feedback. So, so far, you can click again, please, Sarah. Um, here are some quotes. Uh, if you click two more times um, that participants can read. Um, what I'm finding so far is that when students take the time, invest the time to really go through the resources, um, to participate in the discussions, um, this is a very high sort of peer review based course. Um, and when they do that, that very quickly, they um, come back and say, this is so helpful to me, to my organization, to my work. Um, uh, just today, I had a meeting with one of my co one of the cohorts and um, one of the um, pluses that came out, because I do plus Delta with them um, every time, is just how much they like Marathi and that it can do a lot of things that they were, that they previously needed a lot of different software applications to do. So again, those who are taking the time to really dig into the, the course, into the resources mm -hmm. and into especially Marathi resources are finding that it's very helpful. So back to Felix to tell us about the future. Yes, um, so I'm not sure if we mentioned it, but this actually, this was our first course that we developed and we specifically developed it for um, the conservation standards step three, because we figured that for step one and two, there's already quite a bunch of guidance materials uh, out there. So this one uh, was specifically um, aimed at step three. Uh, what we have planned for actually starting this year in the development phase and then rolling out next year is another course that we will be developing uh, and that will be focusing on step four of the conservation standards. <clears throat> if you do another click, I think, uh, yeah, you see that this is still under construction. Um, we will be uh, in, yeah, in discussions uh, actually rather soon <clears throat> on how to best uh, go forward with that. But that's sort of like the outlook for the next year, hopefully launching yet another course uh, and implementing uh, all of the feedback that we're receiving from this first course. Um, <clears throat> I want to say that this has been an initiative with seven individuals, um, a lot from FOS, but also Carl Didier that maybe some of you know, Caroline being one of the team members uh, and a few others, um, and so this has been great. If you want to get involved, um, you can of course visit the, the course website which we linked here, and if you want to be even more involved um, or have direct contacts, feel free to um, ping Marika and or me. Uh, if you have any further questions, want to sign up uh, for the course yourself or have, know anyone who wants to sign up, we also take groups and um, yeah, so that's it from our initiative. Thank you, Felix and Marika. We did have one question in the chat box uh, about how do you actually select the students for the course? It's a very good question. Marika, do you want to take that one? 
Sure, yes, very good question. Um, because we have this requirement that they are, students are somewhat steeped in the step, steps one and two of the conservation standards, um, we realized that we needed a sort of pre-course assessment um, and we developed one which we now send out to students, uh, to applicants um, to complete, to give us an idea of, of their current knowledge. And depending on what we get from that assessment, we would recommend to them either to do some initial or additional training um, in step one and two um, of the conservation standards, or we would approve them to take the course. Anything to add from your side, Felix? No, <clears throat> it's good. Okay. Any other questions for this team? Okay, if it comes to mind, as always, throw it in the chat. Otherwise, we'll turn over to our last initiative for the day, uh, Maradi and IT standards, and Nick and Dan. Okay, it's Nick here. Thank you. What I'll do, uh, sir, if you're willing, I'm just going to date myself and do an old film strip and go ping. So um, this is about Maradi software and IT standards. Yes, there's some noise in the background. Okay, so ping. So ping, you can see with these arrows where this actually fits in, um, another ping. And so these are parts of both the standards and also Marathi. It's all part of the, the tool to enable cross-project learning and work to happen across the MP. Ping. So if you take a, the, I'm gonna start about the classifications first, which we're calling the geekiest and most boring yet essential work CMP does. Uh, so you can see a typical theory of change here, ping. And if that's your problem, if you have a bunch of cows sitting in your landscape and ping, one group decides to call it cows, the next cattle, the next livestock, the next grazing, and the next ranching, you don't realize on a database you're all dealing with the same problem. So back in 2008, ping, for both the threats, so both for the diseases and then also for the cures, for the actions, ping, CMP set out to come up with a ping classification system. We found out that the IUCN Red List folks were actually doing the same thing at the same time, oops. But what we're able to do is take those two different efforts and unify them and create a set of unified global classifications of threats and actions, ping. So we published them, um, those, those classifications, no, you're going too far, you gotta go back. So we published them and they were published in this paper. It was really important to get them in the academic literature and they became after some academic controversy. Uh, so we had a bunch of back and forth with some folks in Cambridge about different classification systems but we've published them and they've been used and really widely adopted around the world. So there's over 650 citations. It's applied across the red list. It's used by governments around the world. They're baked into Marathi. My favorite use of these is if you go to the ICCB, the SCB meetings, or if you go to IUCN, the World Conservation Congress, a lot of the symposia were structured by the threats and the threat classification. So that's how they organized themselves and thought about things. So it's, it's, it's become a, a real true global standard. Ping. So unfortunately in 2013 though, they ununified. And so we had the red list and the CMP ones. Uh, CMP went ahead and we went on a seven year cycle to try to update those standards and classifications. We went ahead and came up with version 2.0 of both the action and the threats one. IUCN unfortunately did not come along. They've kind of done some minor tweaks to their version. So they have 3.2 of threats and 2.0 of actions. Ping. In particular, if you could hit a couple times here. Um, we, the CMP, the threats one didn't change very much in 2013. We added some, a few threats like disease and stuff, but for the most part it held up. But the actions classification changed very dramatically. And we think it got way, way better. So in particular, if you look at the dra graphic down below, we were able to segment actions now into just uh, three different buckets, target restoration, stress reduction, behavioral change, and then enabling conditions. Version 1.0 doesn't have any of the enabling condition to action. So it's missing a whole chunk of things that, that conservation is due. Ping. So when we did this version in 2013, we worked closely with the IUCN Red List folks. They were into it, they liked our changes, but they couldn't endorse the new version. And in part, we were actually victims of our own success. It was partly because they had tagged so many entries across the Red List with the old classification that they felt their members would rebel if they introduced a new classification. So we kind of held off publishing and one thing led to another. Now it's seven years later and we kind of have two different classification systems sitting out there. Uh, they haven't really been published and it's not kind of serving that function that originally it was envisioned it would hope to do to become a unified system. So ping. 
So what's next? Well, it is time for our next seven year revision of these classification systems. We would like to approach IUCN folks as well as other interested parties. For example, Environment Canada is really into kind of uh, exploring classifications and using them. We propose to uh, look and vet any changes to the threat and actions classification. We might want to think about third level classifications, maybe also addressing stresses. And if we're really crazy thinking about contributing factors, uh, you already saw a lit how it links to CAMEL and come and come in with actions for their uh, standard actions for each of those different classification types. And this go around, I think it would be really important to publish the results as well so that it gets into the formal academic literature and it gets more systematic. So in all our spare time, we would like to take this up in the next year or so. We need folks to participate in developing and peer reviewing the revisions and also in publicizing this work. Please contact me if you think you're geeky enough and would like to be a part of the, the fun that we're having here. All right, next. Second part of this is about Marathi. Uh, I won't go a lot into it, but Marathi is continuing to evolve. So Marathi started off as desktop, working on simple projects. We then got into projects and programs, uh, kind of putting it online with Marathi Share 1.0. We are now working and just released Marathi Share 2.0. And now as we get into 2.0, we're adding a lot of functionality to think about projects, but also project to program relationships, supporting grants and supporting cross-organizational learning. I don't have time to go into it, time to go into much detail here, but a couple highlights, ping. So one is you already heard uh, a little bit from Annette, but uh, we're creating this ability to take data out of Marathi and through APIs, link it to Power BI and kind of create all kinds of cool dashboards, ping. Uh, Carrie also, next one, please. Carrie also talked a bit about, ping, the uh, one-click Marathi Share reports. So Carrie already talked about a little bit of this, how you can take that template, ping, and create a really cool uh, formatted report. This is Barbara's legacy, I should add, because Dan Salzer had a volunteer who um, was wheelchair bound, had trouble using her hands. She would come in and help us clean up Marathi reports once a week as a volunteer for work, puts tons of time into it. Unfortunately, a couple of years ago, she recently passed away, but uh, she, part of her estate legacy was left to increase the reports and do better reports in Marathi. So Barbara not only volunteered her time, she even left money because we, she thought this geeky stuff is so important in terms of making conservation happen. So we do want to celebrate Barbara and what she contributed to Marathi. Ping. And then the last piece I want to do is that we are in Mar the Marathi world starting to work right now on online diagramming. And then hopefully in six months, we'll have fully fleshed online diagramming. As part of that, we're thinking through the whole diagram experience, what it looks like, how it interacts, how people work with it. And we wanna make it much more user-friendly and much more easy. So it's gonna be really cool. Ping. What we need there, uh, best, uh, one other thing is we've also revamped our subscription options as we move online. So Marathi Share is now much cheaper and much more powerful. So uh, we encourage you to start thinking about programmatic uh, use of Marathi Share. Ping. So what's next? Certainly, definitely check out Marathi, follow along on some of the new innovations. Even starting about next week, the, the diagram display will be live and interactive. You can edit factors directly in Marathi Share, so we'll be rolling stuff out. We're happy to give free demos of Marathi's current and planned features for your org. But here's what we need from you all. We need some folks, both Marathi newbies and some experienced users to help us test our new diagramming user interface. So I'd love to get a dozen people in both of those categories who can come and help us test this and make sure it's, in, it's intuitive and easy and works well for both newbies and useful people. We'll be offering a bunch of demos and trainings and these new things. And if you want to get in touch, you can either mail, email me or support at marathi.org. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. That's very impressive. It is amazing how much things have progressed over the years. Um, lots of adulation for you in the chat. Uh, Matt Muir had one uh, suggestion regarding uh, classifications linking to conservationevidence.com. Uh, we have a few moments if anyone else has um, some questions for Nick on this topic. I'm an introvert. I'm okay with awkward silence, but if you're not, time to ask a question. Okay, as I said, we do have a couple more minutes before I find out who wins all the prizes for these great presentations. So I'm gonna open the floor up if you've got any questions for any of the initiatives, any of the presentations, uh, feel free to chime in now. This is Nick, I will make one pitch, which is in general, CMP is what it is. We have these membership meetings, you know, and we kind of present stuff, but the real action in CMP is in these committees. So if, if people in all your spare time with COVID and everything, 
I would make a really strong pitch to join at least one committee and get involved because it's really where the action is. And this is Erica. Uh, I will also second that and say that it doesn't necessarily need to be like one or two people within your organization. You can like for some of this geeky stuff that uh, that Nick's been showing, maybe your IT person would be interested or maybe your your data management person or GIS person. Um, so think about the other people within your organization as well getting involved. Thank you. Those are all great plugs. Again, uh, if anyone wants to chime with a question or throw it on chat and give you just another moment of awkward silence to do so. You could sing to fill the silence. But then you wouldn't want to interrupt my beautiful voice, Nick. <laughs> are you going to put the poll in the chat? I am going to pass it back to um, Caroline and Susan, I think, uh, Sarah, sorry, who are going to lead us on that part of it. Yep. So um, lots of, I'm trying to get the, all the accolades into the notes too as we go along, but it looks like everybody was pretty excited to um, hear from all these initiatives. And now you get a chance to, to vote on them. So as we mentioned, we had some really important uh, categories. Uh, so actually, Sarah, um, you can stay here for just a second. People, if you're in the notes too, you can go to, um, the link is in the notes. I'm also gonna, maybe somebody else I just is put already. it in the chat. Okay, it's also in the chat now. So um, this will take you to our poll and we're gonna go through four different polls. So if you go, you can also text if you prefer. Um, so is anyone not ready? All right, let's do the first one. So Sarah, you just go to the next one and it will show the poll and then it, it, that activates it too, um, if everything goes well. I did test this, so hopefully it will. So people, you can, um, if you're at the poll EV link, you can now, you should get this, um, this poll question. If you don't, let me know. All right, let me go over there. Just make sure this is working. It shows on the polling side. I see the results, but not in okay. presentation. So maybe um, I'm going to, that's too bad because We're, we're seeing the answer when we filled in, Caroline. We see it, we okay. actually see it right here. All right, yeah. so um, I'm gonna go to over to the, maybe I'll become a presenter so I can share the responses. Do you want me to yeah, stop sharing? Uh, yep, that would be, now I don't have things to, let's see. I would like to see this in a pie chart or a, a bar chart. Um, so much for testing this ahead of time. Uh, let me just. And did you all only send us one question? Only yes, you can one? only do okay. one at a time. So okay. um, we'll we'll get this. Karen, response. we've all seen the results, so maybe we can just go on to the next one. Yeah. Camel one overwhelming. All right. I just want to go on because that was yours. Hard to beat an interactive it camel. It wasn't mine. Thanks, Barsha. <laughs> yes. Blake yes. Barsha. Thank you. All right. So, um, Sarah, can you uh, make the next one live just by going to the next uh, slide? So this next one is, which of the initiative's presentations was most convincing? Makes me want to join. Sorry, when I, uh, when actually, I, when I'm gonna, I, I can do it, it myself. Oh, there we there go. We go. Okay, yeah. now we got it. All right. You can only choose one? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Was Nick's last presentation in there? Ah. Uh, yes, it is. It should be. Yeah, I guess it's not in order. Um, oh, I see. 
maybe it's not in order. Okay. Oh, I didn't really want to see. Anyway, you guys can see the responses. It looks like, uh, I don't know if this is updating. Close. We are close. All right, Marathi IT, CS Promotion. Come on, CS Promotion. <laughs> no, this is great. Um, all right. Yeah, it looks like this was effective way in getting people excited. Uh, let's go to the next one, um, which is uh, best execution of the template. Uh, yes, best execution of the template. Now, I don't know if you can even answer this, but we'll see. Does that mean yeah. killing the template? <laughs> It might, yeah. All right. Hey, David, you got one. I, I think he had to jump off the call, but I liked that he said he didn't use the template at all, so that's <laughs> still got <vote. laughs> And nobody noticed or it's a, it's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> well, I, I think he got a little help from some elves in getting mm -hmm. partway there. Um, all right. And then let's go on to the, the next one. Uh, so I'm going to go back here and activate this last one. So which was the most fun to listen to? Including Nick's pings, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know Those what that means. <laughs> You're not old enough. You guys aren't old enough to know film strips. Back in the day, when they they had a record, you know, record like those 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 vinyl things next to a film strip, it would ping. Okay. <laughs> I love. And then the teacher would advance the film strip. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I, I remember the ping. I don't think you have the exact tone there, Nick, but you're right on the ping part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then you have great. to. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for voting, and a huge. Uh, Thank you to all of the initiative leads uh, for their, their presentations. Uh, Sarah, I know you had one more screen uh, slide, I think, to share, so I'm going to stop sharing my yep. screen. I'll do Yeah, so um, thank you to all the initiative leads for your awesome presentations. Uh, we are going to do the exact same thing uh, in December with the rest of our initiatives that weren't able to present today. Um, so we have a list of, you know, who will be likely presenting in December um, and right here on the, on the screen. And if you want to learn more about what the initiatives are doing, both the ones that talked today as well as the others that haven't spoken yet, um, the best way to do that is to visit our workspace. There's an initiatives tab and each different initiative has their own page. Some are more updated than others, but um, initiative leads that if you would like help updating your initiative page, please reach out to me and I can absolutely help you do that either by putting in content myself or I can give you edit access directly and you can add whatever you'd like. Thank you for that, Sarah. I think, um, Caroline, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but that wraps up